Hello, this is Jessica. And so I'm gonna to present to you my chapter five PowerPoint and the points that I found interesting. Okay, let me see here. Share screen. There you go. And then we'll go to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> So chapter five, teaching phonics and syllabic analysis. And it's creating lyrics instruction for all students by Thomas G. Gunning. And so we start out with laying the groundwork for effective phonics instruction. So phonics are essential, especially when reading. And most of the words we read are, are sight words. We also need phonics for names of people or places or events, especially if we don't recognize them in print. Without phonics, we would not be able to read new words. And especially, that's true, especially from, from my, my experience in learning a new language, which is English, for, I had to start out with, with phonics. And, and then I'll get that into more detail, but we're gonna be talking about this also later, right, in the chapter, there was the, um, for the difference between Spanish and English. And then you can, I was able to experience that as well. So there's a lot of, there were quite a few differences. And then one of the parts that I found interesting was stages in reading words. So the, for the first one is the pre-alphabetic stage with where is, which is where students learn a word by selective association. So that means that the word, for example, the word elephant, because of the length or of the word, they will recognize the word elephant or because, or for example, when they see the word look, they will see the, the O's and they will be like, oh, that look, those look like eyes. So it must be look. So they associ associate words with something, right? And so for the second one, he says partial alphabetic stage, which is early letter name. Learners use letter sound relationships to read words. So they may use only the first letter of a word and combine the sound of that letter with context. So these students store incomplete representation of words. And so, so they can often get confused with words like when and went, or is and it. Um, they also use one letter or two. And then the third stage is the full alphabetic stage, letter name. Students begin to process all of the letters in words. So they can know that both cat and hat contain at, at at the end. And then we have the, the fourth, Stage, which is the consolidated, consolidated alphabetic stage with the word pattern, which is where students consolidate and process longer and more sophisticated units. So they process words like hand as in H, E, N, or you know, they divide words into different units, such as H and then E-N together. So they're separating two units. Or for example, in the book, they also mentioned the light, L and then I-G-H-T. So they're separating two different units. And then also another part that was interesting was the teaching consonants. So you can teach a consonant by having a lesson with a phonemic awareness to make sure students can perceive the sound of the element and the the proceeds and then sorry that was and then proceeds to the visual level they can also you, you can also use uh, children's books to reinforce initial consonants however be careful with that because one problem that they came across with was that uh, children might not be familiar with the objects being presented or may call the objects by different names. But you can check on page 186. Um, there is an excellent reinforcement resource um, called Kids Inspiration. 
a library activities. Um, it's a library and it has activities that are phonic based. And you can also do word, word sorting, which is sorting and word sorting helps students analyze elements in words or pictures and select critical features as they place the words or pictures in piles. Um, their students are able to classify words and pictures on the basis of sound and spelling. And they are, they are able to construct an understanding of the spelling system. Okay, and then we go into reinforcing vowel patterns. Oh, maybe, my bad, sorry. Re reinforcing vowel patterns through reading. So we have rhymes when you have using word, word walls, secret messages, the secret word, and making words. So I thought this, this part of the book was interesting. So I put it down, especially on the, the rhymes here at preschool, we, we use a lot of rhymes. So that's really good. I feel that the secret word and making words, it's for older students. I'm not sure if that will work for kindergarten. If you can let me know, that would be great. And then we have teach, teaching phonics to English learners. So this one is what I think that all spe Spanish speakers can relate to. The, so Spanish has a simpler phonology and the orthography than the English. And the Spanish has more multisyllabic words than English. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm pronouncing those words right. Uh, most English programs start with short vowels. Some consonants in English are not present in Spanish. Some sounds that are the same in English and Spanish have different spellings. So make sure that you provide resources and that you also, you know, reinforce or, you know, uh, explain what the confusions are in the, in the spellings. And then it also come, you know, we continue on and then Spanish speaking students need exercises that help them. Um, and so in the sounds that are not present in Spanish, so to perceive them, um, students have need to complete oral exercises. So you might also enlist the help of the, of the ESL or bilingual specialists to help students perceive unfamiliar speech sounds. <clears throat> Teaching students who are literate in Spanish, explain to them that they already know much of the phonics that they will need in English. You could create a chart and on the skills. And then, so that was all the parts that I found interesting on the book. There's more, I mean, there's a lot more on the book, but this is what I could do in under five minutes. It's, or I think I went a little bit over five minutes, I'm sorry. Um, thank you for watching, and this was Jessica. Bye.